So the cycle is 15 weeks of 500 milligrams test C. Let's get straight into the pictures. So week one to eight, as you can see, I had no foundation to start AAS. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreaids.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about the results from a guy doing a test cycle without having any lifting or dieting experience. So this is a thread I got sent a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was good uh, insight because it's a perfect example of somebody starting gear before they are ready. I often talk about it's not just about your arbitrary age in terms of date of birth, but in addition to that, your actual education in the topic, your knowledge of diet and training, your knowledge of pharmacology, it all is extremely important in determining your um, ability to make the most out of whatever you're gonna use as well as how to do it the safest and to have the least amount of uh, organ stress while doing it while maximizing the outcomes. And, you know, oftentimes we'll see guys who, you know, jump into head first into this shit without any of those three dialed in. And this is another perfect example. We have a basic test cycle on someone with almost no lifting and dieting experience. Prepare your pitchforks. I'm basically the epitome of what this sub hates. A guy who has almost no lifting or dieting experience and jumps on anabolic energetic steroids, disregarding all the correct feedback telling me not to even think about anabolic energetic steroids until a few years of natty lifting. I wanted the shortcut. I'll admit I have self-image issues and just didn't want to be the scrawny guy anymore. I know there's a lot of other guys out there with the same mentality, so this post is to educate them. For the record, I researched for months before starting. Despite, despite me being a fool and starting... AAS with minimal training experience, I knew what I was doing in regards to running a test cycle. So the cycle is 15 weeks of 500 milligrams test C. Let's get straight into the pictures. So week one to eight, as you can see, I had no foundation to start AAS. I blew up from 170 to 195 in eight weeks. Keeping in mind, a lot of this was water retention. I looked like a bloated guppy, but at the time I was impressed with my results. Nonetheless, because I wanted to look bigger. So this is... Uh, the before and afters, selfie time. All right, so that is, uh, holy shit, almost 23,000 views on this image. So that is uh, the progress so far, I guess. Week one to eight, week one to eight, same clothes. All right, well, it looks like he's filling out the fucking shirt a lot more if that's uh, the exact same thing. Um, let's see, week one to eight, side view. All right. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, the reason I'm laughing is because I just know the comment section is going to be like, this guy had no business touching this shit, which is warranted when you have no lifting and dieting experience. That's eight weeks. I mentioned earlier, it was a 15 week cycle. Where are the photos from the end of the cycle? Well, I plateaued around week 10 and stopped eating enough. Yep. What a waste of five weeks. Training and diet. My diet was actually somewhat decent despite my lack, despite my lack of knowledge. I ate a 500 surplus, but went over it. Quite often, eating mostly clean foods and high carbs. I would have a cheat meal maybe twice a week. I won't bother listing the diet because I doubt anyone really cares. Training was P-H-U-L, which stands for Power Hypertrophy Upper Lower. And I won't lie to myself. I definitely could have pushed myself harder in the gym. And I didn't have much ex much lifting experience. So my form was more, likely, more than likely shit. All my lifts... Went up incredibly fast, but I never attempted one rep maxes. The most I was able to bench was 110 pounds for five. Flame me. I deserve it. Anyway, here's the best part. Post-cycle. I pretty much looked the exact same as I did pre-cycle. I made crucial errors with diet and training during PCT and just a general lack of knowledge and experience put me back at square one. All right. So this is uh, post, apparently. Side effects. My E2 was very high when I got bloods at six weeks and I ended up having to run 25 milligrams of aromacin every day because my body composition was nowhere where it should have been to be on AAS. All but I do believe I aromatize heavily either way. This caused high blood pressure and made me a bloated potato. I was never able to dial in my AI. My body fat percentage was too high by week eight. My hairline receded and thinned and this caused stress about whether or not to start finasteride. All of this for what? Nothing. I gained nothing besides probably damaging my health because I let my insecurities get the better of me. Too long didn't read if you're not serious about the gym lifestyle and want a quick fix to get some muscle, don't make the same mistake I did. I can honestly say I regret it, but I'm not ashamed to share my story here. AAS is for, the, is for gym veterans. Don't learn that the hard way like I did. I'm not saying you can't put more effort into it than I did and maintain your gains and reach your goals, but my point is if you're a beginner, do not touch AAS. There's 180 comments here. Uh, I'm actually super happy this got posted. We get a fair bit of people on here asking about 
If steroids are a good shortcut to get bigger and muscular, and this post shows that the answer is, as anyone who has basic common sense knows, knows a resounding no. I won't flame you because I'm sure others will, but I really hope this stays up and even gets posted to the Hall of Shame. I want this to stand as a lesson to the numerous people who come in here who have done no research on their own and want the easy way to change their physique. Steroids are enhancement to an already established diet and exercise routine and lifestyle. And OP shows no matter how many milliliters of gear you push into your butt that you must put in the effort to train diet properly, properly or you only get trashed blood work. So this is exactly what I've been talking about. So, you know, the t even the times in the past where I've just been like, you know, fuck it, I'm going to let the drugs do the work. I'll do half ass if it fits your macros diet model. I'll do, you know, fluff workout training where I just go for pump only and don't really focus on progressive overload whatsoever. Just lifting for feel and all this shit because I thought, you know, just testing how well drugs work, doing a fucking stupid experiment. And it turns out they don't work that well in the absence <laughs> of the fucking reinforcing variables that determine if you make progress or not, which is a high quality diet model and a high quality exercise routine and high quality sleep, which is often overlooked too by guys who are getting their six hours sleep and abusing the fuck out of stems and all this kind of shit that often goes overlooked. Like the sleep component, massive, massive as well. So like how common is this? Pretty fucking common, believe it or not. Most guys that use gear, you would not even believe use gear. Like when you think of gear, you think of guys in the fitness industry who have model looking physiques. You think of guys who have blatant, you know, androgenic kind of, you, you see a guy with a side effect and maybe you might be able to point it out like, oh, the guy has gyno, the guy has hair loss, the guy has ridiculous back acne. So it's easier to point it out. But when you're seeing a guy who's just, you know, a normal looking dude and you're trying to determine has he used gear or not, you'd be shocked how many guys at your gym have probably used shit before and don't look like they have. Like the majority of people do not look sauced that are on sauce or have sauced before. And this is a perfect example of that. And a perfect example of why you need to do your research before you get into this shit. Like I know I harp on that so much, but it's true. You know, if you think you understand this stuff, you're very impatient. You know, you just want to get the fuck going because you see gym shark athletes and guys who have insane physiques that you aspire to look like. You're going to just put stress on your organs unnecessarily and end up spinning your wheels when you do shit like this. When you don't understand how to eat, when you don't understand how to train, even if you know how and you half ass it intentionally, which is like a mistake I've made before, just out of sheer fucking laziness and experimentation, thinking I have unlimited cycles in the tank and I can just, you know, try this and see what happens. And then if it works great and if it doesn't, whatever, I'll just fix it on the fucking next one. Like, no, dude, do everything perfectly. <laughs> I know that's a tall task to ask to do everything perfectly, but like, I sincerely, I'm telling you, if you don't, you're going to kick yourself for it because you're going to be down the line at some point where you're having to pull things back and think, wow, like all those cycles that I did where I half-assed this or I half-assed that, I wish I made the most of it. I wish I squeezed all of the growth I could have out of that. So now I can maintain a way higher quality physique with barely anything. Like maintaining a high quality physique is so much easier than building it in the first place that when you have that high level of drug exposure, you need to be fucking dialed in. That is the moral of the story. So anyways, take from that what you will. This was a, another good example of a, uh, like a pretty sizable cycle, you know, half a gram on his first cycle, um, 15 week duration. Like most people aren't passing 12 weeks on their first cycle either. So this is like pretty substantial and the guy just totally spun his wheels and ended up with a thinner hairline um, back where he started essentially and uh, learned a hard lesson. So let this be a lesson to anybody who is, you know, delving into the realm of anabolics and is not aware of this shit yet. Get like, uh, educate yourself thoroughly before you touch this stuff. And that's not just the diet and the training. Understand the pharmacology thoroughly. Understand how HPTA suppression works. Understand the endocrine system. Understand post-cycle therapy practices that are going to be necessary to try and maintain what you have gained so you don't just end up fucking falling apart after you finish. Don't just come off your diet and think that, oh, because now I'm off cycle, I need to train like a different way and, you know, put myself up at risk of strength loss and fucking eat like this and do this differently. Like, no, dude, understand the all of the fundamentals thoroughly before you look at this shit. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates, and more updates. Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. And that is where you can get uh, my recommended lab test panels and diagnostics, especially if you're somebody who's going to be getting into shit like this. You should have baseline blood work especially if you've never used gear, you're never going to have a baseline again. Every single person should have one thorough baseline panel before they touch shit. So make sure you have that. 
And then obviously, you know, mid cycle, you should be getting like peak exposure blood work as well, as well as, you know, post cycle blood work and whatnot to make sure and see if you have recovered to the baseline that you should have got before you touched anything and uh, so on. So recommended lab tests and diagnostics links are in the description below as well as anything else I'm associated with. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.